Light may seem an unmanageable force, naturally spilling into and filling every void and vanishing as instantly as it appears. Researchers Professor Jonathan Knight and Dr Tim Burks at the University of Bath are faced with a challenge to rein in light and harness its powers for modern applications. This technology is known as photonics. It's not light's illuminating powers that they're interested in, however, but its ability to carry data. The information that creates the video you're now watching will almost certainly have been channeled to your computer by light, which has travelled along fibre optic cables. To help us understand what photonics is, the researchers compare it to electronic methods of carrying information. Well, photonics is a technology. It's, um, I suppose it's uh, being able to control and manipulate information um, which has been carried along in light, uh, in contrast to, you know, traditionally, it's carried on as an electric uh, current. Uh, in wires. So just as we have electronics to control the flow of electrons and manipulate them and send them in different directions and change their, uh, the size of the current, um, in photonics you need to change the intensity of light or the direction of light or the wavelength of light and in that way um, uh, it's a, as a way of communicating information from one place to another. So light can be controlled but not without a great deal of coaxing. One thing which makes light more difficult to deal with than electrons, and that is light actually can propagate freely uh, on its own through free space, and it's not easy to convince light to go where you want it to go. With electrons it is very easy because electrons, like wires, if they see a wire they would like to travel along it. Whereas with light you really need to create a special environment which will convince the light to go where you want it to go. And so a lot of the work which we've been doing has been about trying to find new ways of uh, coercing light to go exactly where we want it to go and behave as, we, as we'd like it to behave in order to be able to, to use its power. Much faster than electronic cables, fibre optic technology is a great advancement. Its applications are diverse, ranging from medical equipment, to the internet, to scanners at the supermarket checkout. However, optic cables currently in widespread use still have limitations, which is where the importance of the photonics research group's work at Bath comes in. The fibres that exist sort of in use at the moment are quite simple structures. They're made usually of solid glass. There's a central region called the core where the light travels and around it is a slightly different type of glass and it's the difference between the optical properties of the core and the surrounding glass that keeps the light in the core. So what we've pioneered here is a new type of optical fibre where instead of two types of glass you have just one type of glass but around the core you've got an arrangement of, of little holes just filled with air and it's this, this pattern of holes that keeps the light in the core. The pattern of holes acts a bit like a mirror. It reflects the light that tries to spread out and pushes it back into the core. It's got nowhere else to go but just along the fibre. The possibilities are enormous. Some examples of current developments using the fibre are improved lasers for cutting and welding, improved sensors for detecting gases at landfill sites, and fibre-based tools for diagnosing disease. Another extraordinary use could be to transport small particles such as viruses or cells down the central hole in the fibre, powered by the momentum of the moving light itself. One way of thinking about it actually is that in a standard fibre, the whole fibre is formed from two materials and can be defined by just a couple of parameters. But in our fibres we have actually hundreds of holes and you can actually make them all different if you want to. So you have many more levers to pull um, to create the specific uh, fibre response which you would like. Light is, of course, a source of great beauty, and the pleasures of working with it can be illustrated by the exciting moment that their holy grail, the hollow core fibres, were first realised. It wasn't actually me who made the fibre, but I do remember the sort of excited noises coming from the lab where the fibre was made at that time. And I went in myself and looked at this just little piece of fibre uh, under the microscope. And you could see the fibre lit up in the way that you would normally expect small samples like this to look under the microscope. But in the middle, in the core, was this beautiful spot of blue light and it was kind of hanging there, detached from the rest of the structure. And the reason it's blue is simply a part of the nature of the way these fibres work, but it really was, uh, it was so beautiful uh, to, to, to my eyes uh, as a scientist to, to see this, this, this thing that we've been looking for for so many years and there it was right in front of me. I think part of the attraction is that uh, these things were so obvious. They, they're not a tiny little effect that you really have to do a lot of data analysis to, uh, to see. Because it's light and because we're working with light and because we've got eyes, uh, it just leaps out at you and you know when you're looking at it that this is something which nobody's ever seen before. Very, very exciting.